Bushte Kiribi de Bushta Dada de Bosa Libakaya Baba de Bushte. Blessed day, blessed day to every one of you. This is Patrick Quino. I'm bringing you Fate Moments, a time where we talk about or we, we remind ourselves about what God is saying to us as His people. We give God the thanks and the praise for another blessed day that he has given unto us. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. Mary, good morning to you. Good afternoon, wherever you are, under the sound of my voice. We bless God for keeping you and blessing you and selecting you to be part of the living and not the dead. We give God a praise. We give God praise. Amen and amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for this blessed day you have given unto us. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For you created it. You did it for us. And you have given it to us. We receive it by faith. We receive it with gratitude. And we thank you for it. Spirit of the living God. Oh, it is all about you now. And all that you are doing. We need to have an understanding of who you are. Help us reveal yourself to us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Mary, God bless you. Please uh, do me a favor. Share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. Good afternoon from where you are, from UK. Good afternoon, Mary. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. From Philadelphia, Sister Q. Sister Q, God bless you from the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection god bless you it was good to see you it was good to see you and i'm um, looking forward shannon god bless you god bless you shannon god bless you god bless you now now god bless you all of you god bless you it's good to know that you are among the living and not the dead you are among the living and not the dead and so we give god the praise and we give god the honor amen uh, in the few minutes, in the few minutes, I'm going to be speaking to you concerning, beloved, very important thing in our lives. God has now released me from this subject of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Because uh, I, I believe there is more that I have to know myself and therefore using me as a vessel to bring you, um, his people, down us. God bless you to his people the understanding and the personality and who the Holy Spirit is and uh, the importance of us receiving his, Him and His ministry. Are you listening to me? Um, a. Bishop Damon Fisher. God bless you. Are you listening? So please do me a favor. Tag your friends right now. Tag your friends. Share this pro, uh, broadcast right now. Do me. That is what I want you to do for me. If you love me, do that for me. Tag your friends because I'm going to be speaking about very important subjects that we need to understand. <clears throat> Are you listening? All right, so tag your friends. Share this broadcast right now to all your friends, loved ones, um, and everybody. All right, do that for me. Because if you're a child of God, you must understand what I'm going to talk to you about, okay, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, okay? And talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, today I want to talk to you about a sonship. The fact that the Holy Spirit gives sonship. All right? And it's so, so, so important for us to understand. We can't, we, listen, we can no longer walk on the face of this earth struggling because we have not invited the Holy Spirit. We have not engaged the Holy Spirit in our lives. I mean, I, are you not tired of being tired? I don't know what you are going through, beloved. But this is the key. Without the Holy Spirit, we will still be struggling. It doesn't matter whichever, which area of your life. Are you listening? In this world, in this world, Jesus says that this world is full of tribulations. This world is full of problems. This world is full of chaos. And you can look around and see it all over. Families, marriages, finances. Um, businesses, churches, ministry, government. Beloved, just think about it. That without the Holy Spirit, we cannot, we cannot do it. 
I don't know about you or who I'm talking to, but I, I, I am tired of being tired. Madhu from India, God bless you. God bless you, all right? Listen, I am, I am, I am just tired of uh, going through things on my own. And I didn't realize, see, I didn't realize that the Holy Spirit was to be with me and in me forever. So you see, I was, I was religious by, by engaging the Holy Spirit or uh, uh, looking for the Holy Spirit on Sundays. I thought the Holy Spirit was for my Sunday service. Are you listening? I thought, Kenneth, God bless you. I thought the Holy Spirit was, well, when you go to church and you, 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 you see the Holy Spirit. No, beloved, the Holy Spirit is for, is for us and to be with us every day of our lives. We have 365 days in a year in our current dispensation. The Holy Spirit is with us and has to, He is with us. We have to engage Him. Are you listening? We have to engage Him. Without the Holy Spirit, Christians will be suffering. Why? We are living in the earth, on this earth, in this world, that Jesus says, this world, the world do not know the Holy Spirit. They don't know Him. But you do. The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Because the world don't know the Holy Spirit. But you do know the Holy Spirit. So why are you not engaging the Holy Spirit? Alison, God bless you. Why are you not engaging the Holy Spirit in every area of your life? And we are struggling. We are struggling with our finances. We are struggling with our marriages. We are struggling with our families. We are struggling with our jobs. We are struggling with our businesses. We are struggling and we call ourselves the children of God. Yet God has given you and I a helper in every area of our lives by the name of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? If we don't engage the Holy Spirit, beloved, we can't do it. We cannot do it. Why Jesus says the world do not know the Holy Spirit. The world don't know the Holy Spirit. And He is our helper. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Are you listening? Vinitha. Uh, if I don't pronounce it well, forgive me. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is not only for our Sunday service. Or anytime we show up in that, you know, in that building and uh, we say we're having church. And, 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 you know, just having the drums go and the music go and then we're shaking and all that. No, beloved, no. No. This is the, 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 the kept secret for every believer. Are you listening to, to me? So I, I'm, we're going to look at some scriptures and uh, for you to know that every move you got to make, you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Beloved, I, me personally, Pastor Quino, I have made so many mistakes, so many mistakes. And, and uh, sometimes you even think you are doing good because in your, in your good heart, you want to be doing good. Do you remember when David wanted to buy, uh, build a, uh, 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 a temple for God and with good heart? And God asked him, have I asked you to build me anything? David, I mean, David loved God that he wants to do something good for God. But beloved, we have to not just go ahead of God. He knows what is good for us. He knows what is best for us. So we cannot. Gabriel, God bless you. And I am telling you, I have made so many mistakes because I thought I was doing good. And, and it ended up turning out to be bad because I was, first of all, not led by the Holy Spirit. And I didn't know. I, I thought, because I did not ask Him. So I, I went up, I got up, you know, and I want to do good to people. I want to do good here. I want to do good there. But was it the Holy Spirit? Beloved, the Holy Spirit is not only here. It's not only here to, to, um, to um, get us to have goose, goose, you know, bumps in our, our, ourselves and, and at the church and we are shaking and all that. No, the Holy Spirit, as a matter of fact, 
as a matter of fact he speaks to you and I that we must hear his voice now I am going to tell you something that is very very important for you to see that that if the Spirit of Christ is not in you you can be in church all you want but you don't belong to him if the Spirit of Christ and who's the Spirit of Christ the Holy Spirit if the Spirit of Christ is not in you you do not belong to Christ yes I didn't say that the scripture says it as much as let's go right there Romans chapter 8 Romans the 8th chapter look at the look at the scripture for yourself look at the scripture Romans the 8th chapter look at it verse 9 verse 9 Romans chapter 8 look at verse 9 all right when you get it you get a chance please make time and read the entire book of the Romans the 8th chapter every scripture I'm going to give you I'll be doing a selective part however for your own reading and for your for your full understanding please go back and read from the beginning are you listening Rebecca God bless you please share this broadcast right now tag your friends and your loved ones let them be part of this and listen to this now Romans the eighth chapter look at the the ninth verse but you are not you are not in the flesh you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you now watch this now watch this now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ he does not belong to him look at that if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ that person does not belong to Christ so ask yourself do you have the Spirit of Christ now who is the Spirit of Christ the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit now let me take you let me take you to um um, um, look, you know what? Before we do that, look, look, look here, look here, look here. But he says, but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Verse 10 says, and if Christ is in you, if Christ is in you, the body, your body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness verse 11 but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you are you listening to me watch this now for therefore look at verse verse 13 therefore brethren we are not debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh or for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live now this is where it is watch this now for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god but as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, ask yourself, are you, a, are you a son of God? Are you a child of God? Do you do things being led by the Spirit of God? Do you do things being led by the Spirit of God? Beloved, this is where I believe that a lot of us are falling and getting ourselves into areas of problems because we are not led by the Spirit of God. And meanwhile, the Spirit of God is here with us to help us in every area of our lives. The Holy Spirit. When you talk, you start talking about Holy Spirit, it looks like the tempo and the temperature goes down. But beloved, that is, that is the most important message you want to hear. Why? Because without the Holy Spirit, see, the Holy Spirit is the backbone of every believer. The Holy Spirit is the is the 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 the, 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 the engine 
the holy spirit is the gas in your car the holy spirit is the the engine in your car the holy spirit is what makes anything move as long as you are a child of god if not you as a child of god as you claim you will be doing the things that the world do but you see jesus says in matthew chapter 14 verse 17 that the world do not know the holy spirit but you do so why do you want to do the things of the world because you don't know the listen any child of god i've come to realize any child of god who is doing the things of the world do not know the holy spirit that's right you don't know the holy spirit why because jesus says in in john chapter 14 verse 17 that the world do not know the Holy Spirit. So if the world don't know the Holy Spirit, and so therefore they do what they, they do, right? Then why are you also doing the things of the world? Obviously, you don't know the Holy Spirit. Beloved, I, I am telling you that being in church does not mean you know the Holy Spirit. You can be singing in the choir and don't know the Holy Spirit. Listen, as a matter of fact, I believe strongly that you can be preaching the you can be preaching the gospel and don't know the Holy Spirit. Because people go to school, people go to theo theological school to learn about the about Bible and theological things. But theology does not give you the, 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 the experience of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Theological seminary and schools does not does not engage you with the Holy Spirit. Beloved, there's a lot of people. I have met people who have who cannot even spell their names. Are you listening to me? And they are full of the Holy Spirit and can 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 quote you a scripture. You open it, you show it to them, they don't they cannot read. But you, they will quote you the scripture and when you go there, it's there. I know people who have not gone to school. They have not attended school. They, don't, they cannot even speak the English I'm speaking. But yet, they are full of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, look at Peter, the disciples. Look at these guys. They haven't been to schools. Peter, Peter was a fisherman. Bible says that when he was even arrested by... by, by, by 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 uh, the by the holy spirit you know working through him he was arrested the the the, the sahindri the, the the chief priest and the, and all those people says well we know that these people have are not educated so how are they able to do what they are doing because you see their mindset was you have to be educated to to be able to do the things of god no beloved no when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are a different human being. You are a different person. And the Holy Spirit has been sent by, by Jesus to us that he will help us in all areas of our lives. Yet, we are not engaging the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, I titled the message, well, well, Common Sense of Christianity. Common Sense. Because why are we not engaging the holy spirit and we think that the holy spirit is only for church service on sundays and yet throughout the week christ we are complaining we are struggling we are we are speaking the negative things because that is what we we have engaged ourselves with we have engaged ourselves in the negative environment of the world yet 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 we say we are of the children of God but if watch this now for as many as are led by the Spirit of God not the spirit of this world not the spirit of this world but the Spirit of God these are the sons of God as many as are led by the Spirit of God not the spirit of this world because the spirit of this world do not know the Holy Spirit Jesus said that so ask yourself, I'm asking you this question as well. Do you know the Holy Spirit? Is He dwelling with you? Is He in you? Because that is what Jesus says. That when the Holy Spirit comes, He will dwell with you and He will, he will be with you. And the Holy Spirit has come. 
So are you engaging the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit your friend? How often do you talk to him? Have you spoken to him this morning? When your day began, have you spoken to him to lead you into the areas where you should go? Or are you are going and when you find yourself in trouble, then you begin to cry out to God. Beloved, let us engage the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, listen, we will be more powerful on this earth if we do engage the Holy Spirit. If we really engage the Holy Spirit, first of all, we must understand who He is. Now, you also have to understand that Scripture says to us in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 2, uh, reading from the sixth verse down, that the Holy Spirit is the one who knows the things of God, even the deep things of God, the Holy Spirit. So if that is the case, then why are we then as children of God going through areas of struggle, going through areas of challenges? Beloved, if we do not know the Holy Spirit, we will go through every challenge and every... Because why? Jesus says, in this world, this world is full of tribulations. This world is full of tribulations. But I have sent you the helper so that you can go through these tribulations with the helper. Now, without the helper, you cannot. That is exactly what it is. And so if you are praying and praying and praying and praying, giving and giving and giving and giving, going to church and church and church and church, and the problem is still the same, Beloved, like I always say, switch gears. Because you're probably using the first, the first speed. If you're a driver, you understand this. You're probably using the first speed to travel from one state to the other. You're going to mess up the car. You can't do that. You cannot do that. And so, understand what I am saying to you. I am, understand what, what God has given to us. Receive the Holy Spirit, beloved. Receive the Holy Spirit and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, somebody asked me this past uh, weekend um, um, in Ruach, after the, uh, the Ruach conference, that um, can you uh, be refilled? Refilled with the Holy Spirit. I said, well, the Holy Spirit is not... Um, a bottle of coke that you have to drink and then you ask for a refill <laughs> are you listening the holy spirit is not it's not a coca-cola that you drink and you know you you want a refill well first of all you must when you have him and you are feel of him how do you refill first of all you have not received him and and as many as receive as many as receive him to them to them to them we're given the right to become the sons of god to be to them to them so ask yourself have you received him to become a son of god a daughter of god jesus himself was even led look at this scripture again chapter 8 romans chapter 8 look at verse 14 it says for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. Not the Spirit of this world. As many as are led by the, the, the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And Jesus himself was even led by the Spirit of God after he was baptized. Yes. Look at John uh, Matthew chapter 4. Go, go with me quickly. Let's look at some scriptures. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Look at Matthew, the fourth chapter. Jesus himself was led by the Spirit of God. Beloved, you cannot go through this life without being led by the Spirit of God. Matthew, look at Matthew chapter, chapter 4. The fourth chapter of Matthew. Are you there? Okay. Now, look at verse 1. Matthew Matthew chapter 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus was led. Now, if you, if you take one step with me to chapter 3, you will understand where 
I just quoted to you. Chapter 3. Now, look at verse 11. Okay? I, for the sake of time, I indeed baptize you. This is John. John is speaking here. I indeed baptize you with, uh, with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. Whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. For he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He who is coming after me is mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Beloved, if, if, oh my goodness, watch this now, watch this now, watch this now. Look at verse 13. All right. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John after John is saying all this. Jesus coming from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Jesus himself was baptized. Now we're going to see that the Holy Spirit came to Jesus, came upon Jesus. Jesus was baptized. Watch this. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I have, I, have, I have need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? But Jesus answered, answered John and said to him, Permit it to be so. Permit it to be so. Now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then Jesus then, Pete, then, then um, um, uh, John allowed him, uh, Jesus allowed him to be baptized. Now watch the verse 16. Then Jesus, when he had been baptized, came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. The Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. <clears throat> now, chapter 1 of verse 4. Uh, uh, verse 1 of chapter 4. Watch this. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Jesus was led. Beloved, are you being led by the Spirit of God? Are you led by the Spirit? Are you led by the Spirit? Are you led by the Spirit? Or you are doing things you're on your own according to the systems of this world. The world, Jesus says, does not know the Holy Spirit. The world do not know the Holy Spirit. And so the, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, has come to help you and I. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Are you a son? Are you a child of God? Are you a child of God? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, are you led this morning? You are going to work, or you already at work? Are you led by the Spirit? You want to? You want? You have taken this decision to do this A, B, C, but are you led by the Spirit? You want to travel here and there. Are you led by the Spirit? You want to marry to this person. Are you led by the Spirit? You want to take this decision. Are you, I mean, you want to, you want to engage yourself in this school. Are you led by the Spirit? As many as are led by the Spirit. Hey, my brother, pa, God bless you. As many as are led by the Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit, you are not led by the Holy Spirit, you are... It says, as many as are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Are you part of the family of God? I'm not talking about going to church. Beloved, you can preach the gospel without the Holy Spirit. I know as I'm telling you, I said, listen, you can go to Bible school all you want. I often say this, going to Bible school does not make you a preacher. As many as are led, 
The disciples could not go to preach the gospel that Jesus told them until they were led or they were filled by the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself, we just read that, has to, was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon him and then he was led to the wilderness. Jesus did not just pick up himself and go to the wilderness and invited Satan. Satan, come and tempt me. No, Jesus was led to the wilderness, the Bible says. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus was led after the Holy Spirit has come upon him. Are you being led? Are you led to do the things you are doing? Because see, Jesus says, the world do not know the Holy Spirit. But you, you do know him. But are you engaging him? Has he filled you? Many of us, we have gone through life making a lot of mistakes. Beloved, we've gone through life making a lot of mistakes because we were not led by the Holy Spirit. We were not led by the Holy Spirit. If you don't let the Holy Spirit lead you, you will make a lot of mistakes. Because check this, check this. The world you live in do not know about the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. Jesus says that. Jesus says that, that this, the world do not know the Holy Spirit and you are living in it. So how do you make a difference? How do you become a different? How do you stand out? The Holy Spirit. Without Him, you will not stand out. You see, why, you see how Jesus stood out among the preachers of His time when He came? Because they were not filled with the Holy Spirit. They were not. That is why they were surprised. That's why they were fighting. Listen, anytime you see any preacher fighting another preacher or condemning another preacher, watch, watch the spirit that is operating in that person. See, that is why, oh my goodness, thank you Holy Spirit. That is why the scripture says, test all spirit. Test. Test the spirit. Test the spirit in the church where you are. Test the spirit that is operating at your job, job area. Test the spirit that is operating in your country. Test the spirit that is operating in your family. Test the spirit that is operating in your marriage. Test the spirit that is operating in your financial area. Test the spirit. Test all spirit. It didn't just say test the spirit in, in, in only in, the, in, your, in, in your church or in whoever is preaching. No. The Holy Spirit, Jesus says, He will dwell with you and He will be in you forever. Therefore, beloved, are you engaging the Holy Spirit? Without the Holy Spirit, listen, 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 listen. Go and read. For those who are just joining me, please share this broadcast. But let's look at something very important here. Watch this. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Look at it. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Watch this now. Watch this now. Now, if anyone, uh, uh, if indeed, let me read it again. Chapter 8 of Romans, <laughs> verse 9. Chapter 8, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. If indeed he dwells in you. Now. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Look in your scripture, it's there. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to him. My goodness, how a lot of us, a lot of people do not belong to him. You can be in the church, you can be in the choir. But without, without the Holy Spirit in feeling, without the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to Him. That's, that's, you can be singing with scales. Listen, a lot, of, a lot of people are singing. Michael Jackson was, was one of the best. Name others. Name others. Without the Holy Spirit, beloved, it's just a scale. And there are a bunch of skills in the church. 
There are a bunch of skills in the church these days. Skills, talents, but not the Holy Spirit. Beloved, when we have the, 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 the visitation of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit, there's a revival. The Holy Spirit revives. The Holy Spirit rekindles. The Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit gives you power. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit gives you power. Do you see power in the church these days? No power. No power. I am not here to condemn or put any church down. But beloved, I am, I am sent by God to bring a, a, a reminder of the fact that, hey, stop trying to do things on your own. Let us stop trying to do things in, in, our, on, in our own ability. Those were the days. But Jesus Christ has come to help us in what we couldn't do. And uh, he has left and promised to send us a helper and not a helper. And this helper has come in the person of the Holy Spirit. Why are we not engaging the Holy Spirit? Why are we not welcoming the Holy Spirit? Why are we not are we not embracing the Holy Spirit? And yet we are going through life of challenges. Remember, Jesus, listen, this, this, this world that is full of challenges, you didn't come to learn it. If you don't know that Jesus already told you and I that this world is full of tribulations. This world is full of tribulations. This world is full of problems. Are you listening? This world is full of problems. Are you not tired of trying to do things on your own ability and yet you keep failing? How many times have you failed yourself? I don't know, but I have failed myself so many times until I came to realize and understood that all this while I have a helper, but I've not been embracing the helper. The resource is always close to us. But we are looking far away. Hagar was, was looking for water. For that reason, the Bible says that he took Ishmael and put him in a distant area because they had run out of, out of bread and water. And, and he, she couldn't you know, just sit down and see her child die. And the Bible said, the angel of the Lord appeared to say, Hagar, Hagar, what is your problem? God has already heard the cry of Ishmael. What are you looking for? Water? Look, what, look at the brook next to you. The water is right there. Beloved, the Holy Spirit is, is right with us here. Why are we not engaging the Holy Spirit? And we are going through this life struggling. Why are we not engaging the Holy Spirit, beloved? The difference between you and the world is that you have a helper. Do you, do you, don't you realize this? Listen, this is why I said common sense Christianity. You can't help yourself. A helper has been sent to you. Yet you said, I don't, I, I am not embracing him. I'm not engaging him. I want to do things on my own. Beloved, you will continue to struggle. You will continue to suffer. Engage the Holy Spirit. The disciples, Jesus says, hey, no, 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 no. Let me tell you what. The reason why you, the disciples, could not heal the sick, you could not open the blind eyes, you could not raise the dead, and often people bring you problems and you couldn't solve them, and they end up bringing the problems to me. The difference is that when I was baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon me. You guys have not received the Holy Spirit. So don't go and start preaching the gospel until you have received the Holy Spirit. Let, Jesus was telling the disciples that. No, 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 no. Don't. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory be to God. You got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because you can quote a scripture or two. Because, yes, you are zealous for God, the things of God. 
being zealous for the things of God does not put you in the place of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm. No. You can be so zealous. Listen, people who are not of Christ even want the Holy Spirit. People who are not of Christ, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. These are the sons of God. And, and this are chapter, uh, verse 14 of Romans, uh, for, uh, Romans, verse 14 of Romans 8. And Romans 9, and 8 again, verse 9 says, Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. He is not his. You are not of Christ. You don't belong to him without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit. And so, yes, even people, even people who are not of Christ, they want the Holy Spirit. I've personally, personally engaged somebody who is not of Christ but wants the Holy Spirit. How much more you who say you are of Christ, you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. How much more you? I, I personally do not believe or be, I mean think that, think about this. Jesus told us that though this world do not know the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 verse 17, the world do not know the Holy Spirit. Now, therefore, the world is doing all that the world is doing. And you are in this world. And Jesus says, this world is full of tribulations. Do you know what a tribulation is? Do you know what a tribulation is? Do you know what a problem is? How many challenges have you been through in your lifetime? And if you are a child of God, if you, if you have given your life to Jesus, I'm speaking to you, the believers, if you have given your life to Jesus, beloved, then you must engage the Holy Spirit. You must embrace the Holy Spirit. You must, and you must invite the Holy Spirit. Do you think you can do it? A lot of Christians are sick. Sick. I mean, medically sick medically why i'm not saying that you cannot fall as you cannot fall sick here and there if you don't take good care of yourself but beloved if the holy spirit lives in you how does the holy spirit lives in you the other day i had um um a commentary of of uh, you know people just uh bashing you know a, a man of god who by faith and has been around for years talking about a Christian you're not supposed to be sick <laughs> and people were bashing him and saying all kinds of stuff well wait till you fall sick and then we will see who you're going to cry out to the same God or whoever because if you cry out to God when you fall sick then it's as a result of the fact that you did not receive what he gave you. How about that? How does the Holy Spirit... How many, listen, how many times did you hear that scripture says Jesus fell, fell, fell sick? How many times? Did you hear that Jesus was sick? Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. And I'm saying to you and saying again that even people who do not belong to Christ... They want the Holy Spirit. How much more you? You claim you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But yet, but yet, beloved, when you hear this voice today, the Bible says, the voice of the Holy Spirit, Scripture says, do not, do not rebel against it. Receive the Holy Spirit today if you are a child of God. For as many, look at verse 14, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Are you led by the Spirit of God? 
are you led? Jesus was led, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus, after he has been baptized and the Holy Spirit has descended upon him, he was led by the Spirit of God. Do you, do you realize that Jesus often says before he was baptized, he says every time people come to him, his mother and all that, he says, my time has not come. 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 Jesus always said that until, until. He never said those words again. He never said that again. He never said that. He never said that. He never said that. He never said that. Beloved, when he was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon him, Jesus was led by the Spirit. He didn't take himself to the wilderness. Jesus didn't go there by himself. He was led. Are you being led by the Holy Spirit? Are you being led by the Holy Spirit? Now, if you are, if you are somebody is, is asking, uh, I mean those that have Holy Spirit uh, do not get sick. Now, if the Holy Spirit is, is telling you that don't eat a particular food if you can only listen to him and you keep eating and eating and eating and you fall sick. Is that, is that wisdom? Is that wisdom? This is exactly where the issue is. Jesus says, I will send you another helper. The world do not know him, but he will, you know him and he will dwell with you and be in you forever therefore why are you in that and not engaging the holy spirit and you are you are you are going all over the place doing things and struggling in the name of a christian because you are not being obedient the holy spirit beloved is a gentleman he doesn't force himself on anybody he's not a rapist he's not a rapist isn't the Holy Spirit here right now on this in this dispensation we are living in and yet people are just falling sick? If you don't engage him, why are you not engaging the helper? Why are you not engaging the helper? The one who has been sent by God to help you. You are not engaging him. You are not welcoming him. You are not you are not receiving him why wouldn't you go through what you're going through jesus told the disciples no 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 don't go don't go start preaching the gospel until the holy spirit has come upon you until you have received the holy spirit they went to the world after they have received the holy spirit and they found out that there are other other spirits operating other spirits operating but the difference between them and the other spirit was that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Whether you, you have heard this or not, the one time there was a guy by the name of Simon the Sorcerer. He was a sorcerer. Looking at the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit through Peter and the other disciples, he came and offered them money. Can I buy the Holy Spirit? Peter says, let your money perish with you. You think the Holy Spirit is for sale? Let your money perish with you. Let your money perish with you. You think the Holy Spirit is for sale. Beloved, the Holy Spirit is not for sale. And if you play around, it's up to you. But as a child of God, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, as many, are you led by the Spirit of God? For, e for you to be even be eating all that food that your flesh, your bloody, your body is always craving for. Are you led to be eating that, knowing that it makes you sick? Are you led by the Holy Spirit? Are you led by it? Probably you eating that, um, you know, 
Egusi and all those uh, stuff. You love it. You just can't wait. But yet, that is not what you're supposed to be eating. And the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. And then you go ahead and eat and eat and you fall sick. And you want to come and ask a question. You, you mean that the Holy Spirit is in you, you don't fall sick? But get the revelation here. Allow him and follow his lead. Are you led by the Holy Spirit? Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. That is why when Satan came to tempt him, Satan was not able to be successful. Jesus told the disciples, don't go until the Holy Spirit has come. That is why they were able to even now heal the sick and raise the dead. Are you led by the Holy Spirit? Or are you doing it on your own? Let me tell you something. I have done things on my own and failed. Thought I was successful. One time I was. But I realized that, listen, there's no shortcut to this. You will go for years and come back to square one. So you might as well get the foundation strong. Psalms 11 verse 3 says, If the foundation is destroyed, what can you, the righteous, do? If the foundation is destroyed, get the foundation solid. If you are a builder, you will understand what I'm talking about. Get the foundation solid. The strength of the building is as a result of how deep the foundation is. Get the foundation solid. Let the Holy Spirit take control. Let the Holy Spirit take over. Jesus is in the person of the Holy Spirit. He's led. Are you being led? As many as are led by the Holy Spirit. As many as are led by the Holy Spirit. These are the sons of God. Listen to what the centurion says in, in Matthew chapter 27. If we read from 51, uh, let's read something. All right, let me just show you something. I just don't want to just quote it. And, um, you know, let's read that. I'm going to, you know, um, bring it to a close from here. Matthew chapter um, 27. Go to Matthew 27. Let me show you something here. Glory be to God. Matthew 27. Matthew the 27 chapter. Matthew the 27 chapter. Let's look at something here. Matthew the 27 chapter. Look at verse 51. And behold, the veil, the veil, the veil, the veil, the veil, veil, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Watch this now, verse 54. Now when the centurion and those with him who were God in Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Truly, this was the Son of God. Truly, this was the Son of God. Yes, this was the Son of God who was led by the Holy Spirit to do the things he did. As many as are led, they are the sons of God. As many as are led, are you being led by the Holy Spirit? Or you are doing it on your own, beloved? Simon the sorcerer, he looked at the whole picture and he says, My goodness, this is something that I, I can use. Can I buy? Can I, can, I, can I give you guys money to receive what you have? God has sent the Holy Spirit to you and I. And the Holy Spirit is there and you are not engaging Him. And other people even want it. Other people want it. The other day, this guy by the name of Bar Jonah. Bar Jonah confronted the people, the, 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 the sons of God who were filled with the Holy Spirit. He was with the, the governor. And who knows how long he's been with the governor and what he's been telling the governor with a bad spirit. Beloved, if we don't engage the Holy Spirit and begin to operate through the Holy Spirit in every corridor of this world, the spirit of Antichrist will continue to invade 
and until it hits home you will not understand what I'm saying in other words until he comes to your area and destroy what you have because you don't have the Holy Spirit and you are not engaging the Holy Spirit you will, you will, you will understand what I'm talking about beloved we need the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is here we need to embrace the Holy Spirit if we have not if you have not received Jesus Christ you cannot listen to what John said John says he says when Jesus comes he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire when Jesus comes John he says I will I'm baptizing you in water for repentance but when the one who is mightier than I when he comes Jesus he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire have you been baptized first of all have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior have you made him your Lord and Savior if you have not you have the opportunity to do that now and then get to the next level of, of being baptized in the Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit to dwell with you and in you and see your life become more wonderful are you listening without the Holy Spirit beloved forget it you can listen I don't 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 listen to any other gospel I'm telling you think about this think just think about it just think about it the Holy Spirit is your helper not only on church service on Sundays but in every area of your life but yet you are saying I am not engaging the whole I am not I am not receiving the Holy Spirit much more engage him in every area of your life now where where do you think your life is going to be and yet nobody's disputing the fact that you call yourself a Christian well the disciples were Christians too the disciples they were Christians too but they could not heal the sick they could not raise the dead until the Holy Spirit came upon him a Christian is a follower of Christ a believer in what Christ did but can you do can you do that Jesus says the things you saw me do you can do that and even greater works will you do greater well you couldn't you couldn't do that and you cannot do that without the holy spirit because jesus himself received the holy spirit and he then was led jesus was led jesus didn't just decide let me just go and fast for 40 days and all that why well, he doesn't know what food is about but he was led if we are not led by the Holy Spirit, beloved, we will be doing the things the world is doing. The world, that who does not know the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, the world don't know the Holy Spirit. And so if you don't know Jesus, you must give your life to him. And then you will come to know who the Holy Spirit is. If you are that person right now, I'm not wasting any time. All right. Somebody said to me, Pastor, you, you give no nonsense kind of preaching or teaching well I don't know any other way this is common sense Christianity common sense Christianity Christians we have something that other people are looking for and yet we don't want to engage embrace and 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 receive and receive it what is the matter and yet Christians are going through problems and struggling and struggling meanwhile there's a helper think about it La yesterday I said uh, I quoted uh, Bob Marley how many of you will know that the, the uh, reggae guy he's died dead and gone he played a song one of the, the, the songs he says only a fool will say he is thirsty when there's a, a bun abundance of water only a fool will say I'm thirsty there's a bun abundance of water the Holy Spirit is here the Holy Spirit is here and we're going through life challenging, challenging, challenges of life. The helper, Jesus says, I will send you another helper. He's a helper. Why are you, why are you not receiving the help? 
Why are you not receiving the help? I don't know about you, but I need him. I need the help. Trust me, I have done so many things in my life. Travel all over the world. All over the world. I've gone through so many passports. All over the world. I'm not here bragging, but by the grace of God, I have seen things. But beloved, I am talking to you from experience as a child of God, as a believer, as a Christian. That without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, forget it. You think everything is fine right now. It's just a matter of time. Without the Holy Spirit, forget it. Give your life to Jesus today. And receive the Holy Spirit. Even demons, I mean, I mean sorcerers, they want, they want the Holy Spirit. Sorcerers want the Holy Spirit. I engaged a young guy on the phone the other day. He wants the Holy Spirit. Until I found out he's a Christian. I mean, he's a Muslim. Even a Muslim wants the Holy Spirit. How much more you who have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Or maybe you did not. Let me pray with you now and lead you to Him. Receive Him by faith. Open, open your faith up. What is faith? Faith is acting on God's Word. <laughs> you don't see it, but you believe it. Let's pray. Just say right now, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this message I'm, I've heard. I may be passing through the, you know, Facebook and I stopped right here. I believe you wanted me to hear this and to see myself that I, I need help. I need your help. I am a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, come take over my life today. And as John the Baptist says, you will baptize in the Holy Spirit and with fire. I need the baptism of you, Christ. For as many as are led by you, by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. As many. And so, come into my life, Jesus. I receive you today. Amen. If you pray that short, simple prayer, beloved, by faith and sincerely, Jesus has come into your life. We, we, are, talk, we, 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 we are talking about born again. Born again is not a physical um, experience. It's a spiritual experience. Are you listening? Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, I mean, what do you mean by um, uh, you know, a man should be born again? Can, can a grown man go back into the womb of uh, uh, the mother and came back? He says, Nicodemus, I'm talking about spiritual stuff. Because you see, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot even understand spiritual things. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand the spiritual things. Nicodemus, with all your education, you don't understand what I'm saying Jesus says. With all your education. Beloved, I'm telling you and I've told you and tell you again, I've seen people with no education. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. Education does not give you the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Don't, don't get this thing twisted. Don't get this thing twisted. I'm, I'm not... I'm not speaking against going to Bible school to learn about, you know, you know the, the, the things, uh, the Bible and understand certain things. But beloved, I said, I know people who have not, who, who they see their names, they can't even know that is their name. They can't even read or write. But they're full with the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Look at some of the disciples. They were not, they were not educated. But when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were as bold as lions. Talking about the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you will struggle. Trust me. Enoch, God bless you. Without the Holy Spirit, you, you will struggle. I am not prophesying. I am just telling you common sense Christianity. God has given you the helper. Whatever area of your life, you have somebody to help you. If you don't engage, if you don't embrace and engage that this person of the Holy Spirit, you are going to struggle. Now, if you don't have to believe me, wait, just keep living. That's all I'm going to tell you. Well, this is it. 
I'm done. My time is up. All right. Bishop, God bless you. Happy birthday to you again. I look forward to seeing you very soon. Listen, um, you realize that this broadcast has been only on Facebook for some time. We are um, having a fundraiser to be able to raise this money. We need to buy the equipment that will give, will, will, will put us on instant live on all the social media instantly. Instantly. We had an experience with that and it was wonderful and good. So if you are not able to, you are, you are not on Facebook at a time when, you know, this program starts and for example, maybe you are on Twitter, you will see it. If you are not on Twitter at the time the program starts and you are on Facebook, you will see it live. If you are not on Facebook and for example, you are on uh, Periscope live when the program starts, you will see it. So we need to get this software and equipment to help across board. All right, instantly live, instantly. And I'm asking you to support this ministry to be able to, to get that, to purchase that. All right, go to the Facebook. There's um, a fundraiser um, there. Um, there's, uh, you see, it says uh, donate. Click on it and please help. For those who have so far done that, may God bless you. May God bless you. Listen, I am not going to sit here and waste too much time in twisting you, trying to twist your arm. That is not what it is. God loves a cheerful giver. I am not going to be push, you know, pushing nobody. Give and when you give, God will bless you and all that. No, God will so bless you whether you give or you don't give. If that's what he wants to do. Don't get this thing twisted. But whatever we give to God, he, he blesses it and give it back to us. That is another thing. I'll talk, I'll talk to you about it later. God takes what is in our hands. All right. God never take. Listen, I will say this. Our giving to God doesn't make God any richer. As a matter of fact, whatever he, we have in our hands, He gave it to us anyway. But He takes what is in our hands, He you and whether He uses it or whatever, but He gives it back to us. Check check the scriptures. Check the scriptures from Old Testament to New Testament. God never takes nothing from nobody and not, don't return it in a better way. Are you listening? And so He says He loves a cheerful giver. If you are afraid of giving, don't give because you will not receive no blessing. Don't. And so I'm asking you, I'm ask, only asking, I'm only asking you to support, to be part of it. Why? Because when you do that, you are also joining us together to preach the gospel. Maybe you are not able to go to some nations and preach the gospel as Jesus commanded us. But you can join me to do this right here. So go to the, the, um, the website also. Okay, go to the website www.patriquenuministries.com. You will see a button, say donate. Click on it and then follow the instructions. If you want to also um, do that by, by cash app. Okay, by cash app. Some of, some of those of you who have cash apps, you can do that. And it's an instant, instant um, uh, donation you can do right now. Also, this is the number area code 914-572-9816 cash up 914-572-9816 please support let's get this materials and uh, equipment so that we i mean it will be it's exciting it's exciting and you will have part of it to even be impute in putting making an input and putting scriptures and all those things in there some of this, this, this is limited and technology is now wide. So let us, let us broaden, you know, the, the, uh, our, our, our scope with the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. Until I come your way, same time tomorrow. Let me hear from you. Let me do, truly hear from you. All right. Share this broadcast with your friends, loved ones. Let them also hear. You may not have the opportunity to hear this in your church. But I am not against no other church or anything. I, I am teaching the word of God for every believer and for everybody. Jesus says the world do not know the Holy Spirit. They don't know him. But you do. But you do. And as many as are led by him, they are the sons of God. 
Be led by the Holy Spirit in every area of your life. God bless you, Kenneth, for sharing. God bless you. Be led by the Holy Spirit in every area of your life. Your decisions. Be led by the Holy Spirit in your decisions. Be led by the Holy Spirit in your decisions. Be led by the Holy Spirit in your decisions. Be led by the Holy Spirit in your decisions. Be led by the Holy Spirit. You are you deciding to marry this person or you want to date that person? Be led by the Holy Spirit. You want to travel here and there? Be led by the Holy Spirit. You want to attend this school? Be led by the Holy Spirit. You want this job? Be led by the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Kenneth, God bless you. Be led by the Holy Spirit. As many as are led. Beloved, if Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, what makes you think that you want to, you, you cannot be led by the Holy Spirit? You have to be led. To, you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Same time tomorrow. God bless you. I love you. I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding.